Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. You're watching Now Let's Review, and we're going to be reviewing this, the J Plus Booster 2, next on Now Let's Review. So this EV charger is made by Juice Americas, but it's actually a Swiss company. They actually, I think, started in Europe, and this is a version that's made for the American market that doesn't do exactly what the European version does. So if you're watching this from Europe, there's a slightly different product. You probably shouldn't pay attention to what we're talking about here because it looks very similar, looks similar, but it is very different. So right. uh, this is a very different product than the Juice Booster 2. This is the J Plus Juice Booster 2. You get that? There's also a Booster 3. You can find it on Walmart and Amazon. I just checked. Uh, in fact, the kit that we have is right now $5.99 with a coupon. So it's a pretty cool deal. Um, and we want to go through what you're going to get with that kit and whether it's a good fit for you. So the first question is whether you want the 21 foot cable or the 25 foot cable. And to be honest, Jesse, I can't remember which one we have. So let's uh, measure it. All right. Uh, who's, who's getting sent out to the uh, extremes right. here? Here, you hold on to that end. Do we measure it from like right here? I don't know. That's uh, one thing we have to check. All right. See you later. Bye. All right. You just tell me when to keep walking. Yep, keep, you're doing good. <clears throat> this kind of shows how tough this cable is. Tough in a good way? Um, tangly, but it does feel really tough. It feels very quality. Yeah, we're past 18 feet. I think we're going to end up at 21. That's 20 with the sag in it. Let's see, without the sag in it. <laughs> we're at 20... Two? 22. 22? Well, I mean, so am I supposed to measure to the end of this? Maybe this is the 25. No. Oh. I think it's the 25 because, all right, so I think I understand now. The total length is 25. Yeah, so let me, let me explain here. We have to move to the second point here, which is these adapters. <laughs> okay. Okay, so on the end, you're like, wait a minute, what do I plug that into? Well, nothing. This is where you attach an adapter. So you pick what's going to work for you. So this is a NEMA 1450, if that's what you need. So you line up the two red dots and then push, click. I think they're measuring from here to the end, which is 25 feet. They're including this piece. Okay, and the 25 foot one is actually slightly more expensive. Right. So, so it's about $50 more for four extra feet. Right. So you can get the 21 foot or the 25 foot, depending on what works for you. But keep in mind that this distance on the 25 foot is about 22 feet as we measured it very poorly uh, with our, you know, Stanley Fat Max. I think that for me, 25 feet might be too much. As you can see there, that's a lot of cable, but it yeah. really depends on your situation. I, I do want to talk about the cable quality for a second. Mm. It's nice and thin. Yes. It doesn't have a bad turning radius. It feels like probably one of the higher quality cables you're going to find. It just has a lot of twist to it. Hmm. So like if I start to put in some twists, which you do when you kind of tangle stuff up, mm -hmm. you can see that it coils a lot. And obviously there's 22 feet of it. So it's going to, but just to kind of show you it was really difficult because you had charged with it, but now look how kind of unruly it is. Obviously, at 25 feet, it's going to be unruly, but it doesn't have much give on the twist to it. And if we really wanted to extend this out, you're going to have to do a little bit of wrestling. I don't think that's fair, though. I mean, you put twist in it, and if you put twist in any cable, it's going to no, be... No, but I mean, here's... Well, what I'm saying, though, is like when you go to like wrap it up, you're going to be putting twist in it, unless you do some special roadie Actually. technique that you learned from your cousin. So with the kit that we're talking about that you can get on Amazon, it's going to come with a 1450 NEMA, and it's going to come with a 515. These are two very common ones in the US, but just make sure that they work for your use cases. Obviously, this one pulls 220, this one pulls 110. You might be asking, okay, but Zach, I plug that in and then I have all this weight hanging down on my outlet and that could be a problem. We just did that out on our plug and it's fine for 220 because that's kind of a beefy plug and it's kind of meant to hold that. I don't know how well it's going to handle plugging this into a 110 outlet because as you know, a 110 outlet doesn't have the best retention. Yeah, like you probably unplug things pretty easily. So all that weight is going to be hanging on there well, now. And I also want to point out if you have one of those plugs that's upside down, it's becoming more and more common Good point. because uh, it's technically safer to have the plug upside down. If a piece of metal comes down, it doesn't like connect the hot and the mm -hmm. neutral. It just hits the ground. So a lot of places kind of do that, which means you're going to run into some trouble trying to hang this thing uh, while giving it a huge kink. Yeah, so let's talk about that. So you can use it in two ways. Yep. You can either mount this to the wall 
and we'll show you how this fits on. It took us a little while to figure this out. Uh, you go like this and you go like this, here we go. And so this would be mounted to the wall and it takes all the weight and it works very nicely. And so if that's the case, and if you can put the outlet like right there, then you're pretty good. If, as Jesse said, you're putting the outlet like that, I don't know, you're putting a lot of strain, strain on, strain on that very, very short cable. Very short. I think they should have given you a few extra inches. Yeah. So you probably are gonna use this. And then the question is, if, if it's inside your house, like in your garage, no problem. If it's outside your house, this is, uh, so we just said it's a $600 thing. So you are probably gonna wanna put a luggage lock here to keep people from stealing it. You can buy one of theirs for 25 bucks or you can buy your own. If you just do this, you can take it off. So mm -hmm. that's the only way to keep it from coming off. Now you might be asking, okay, well, Zach, I buy the luggage lock and I put it there, but what keeps me from doing this? Well, you buy another luggage lock and they've designed it so that way you wrap the luggage lock around this part, which prevents you from unlocking it. Kind of clever there, but that's $50 worth of locks that are very easy to cut in my opinion. But I will say of the level two chargers that we've tested, even the ones that you can mount onto a wall or something like that, this one's the only one that actually has any security built in. That's true. Um, you could argue for some of the other ones, you could replace some of the fasteners with like tamper resistance. But this one, the actual charger itself is blocking the fasteners that attach it to the wall. And then with an actual lock, you can lock it in and maybe you could get some heavier chain or something like that. This is the only one that actually takes security into account as goofy as luggage locks are for on house security. When you do change out these, you should retain these uh, rubber things to put over the top so like the dirt doesn't get in they're there. Easy to lose. They're easy to lose. So, because uh, they're not really attached to anything. So right. bring over that case there, which comes with it. Okay. So just make sure that you, I would just keep making sure you put the stuff in the case. Now it's, it's a nice case, mm -hmm. but as you can see, it's pretty big. Right. And I want you to consider this, like, I guess I would put my little doofies in here. Okay. I want you to think about the size of this case now when thinking about whether you want to use this as a mobile charger because this will have to go in your car. Yes, it'll fit in a car, of course. Um, and it's got nice little Velcros on the bottom to keep from slipping around. For a mobile charger, I don't know, what do you think? Like compare this to say the Tesla mobile charger, which takes up a lot less space. They can typically go a little bit smaller. The Tesla charger, I believe is limited to 32 amps. This one can do 40. It's a bit heavier. It's definitely a, a little bit larger. The other thing though is with a bigger case, the easier it is to put it in its case. Um, True. Which is something that I think we should probably test out. Okay, let's do it. Let's put it in its case. Right. So, I did a little spiraling before. So, I'm just going to... with gonna spiral it? No, I'm just going to lazily sit it in the case. Because I it looks like it'll fit. Right? We'll just kind of get this in there. Get that. A lot of room in here. Uh, which is a positive and a negative. Uh, it's really up to you. Do you like to pack things really nice and well? Or do you like it to be easy to pack um, and it'll take up more room? So with not too much fuss, I think I'm going to be able to zip this up despite the cords that are dangling out of it right now. So let's see, get it pushed in there. So, I mean, I didn't do any work, right? Just it was, tossed it in. I pretty much just tossed it in. I think I'm gonna be able to get it in. This is a good personality test. If <laughs> There's like two kinds of personalities, right? right? There's one that wants a nice, tiny, tight, small case that mm -hmm. takes work. And then there's the kind of person like Jesse who wants to just throw it in the case, but it now takes up more space. Right. Which one are you, A or B? I mean, and I did it probably a little too messy because I'm probably destroying the zippers. But there you go. Without any fuss or muss, it's in the case. And uh, yeah, it could have been smaller. But again, that's the trade-off. So I want to talk about what it can draw. So if you plug it into a 220, outlet using the 1450 uh, NEMA, you can pull up to 40 amps. I want you to be careful here because if you have a, let's say 30 amp circuit, it will just pull the 30 amps obviously, but you may not want that. And so what's happened to a bunch of reviewers I've read is that it pulled the maximum and it breaker clicked off. Why? Because circuits really aren't designed to have the full amount pulling all the time. It overheats this, the circuit. You need to um, wire it up so that you have over capacity. Mm -hmm. And so we plug this into a 60 amp circuit. We were able to draw the full 40 amps for multiple hours and, and charge up our Rivian. And that's fine because we over designed the circuit. So if you have a 60 amp, maybe even a 50, check with your electrician, then this should be fine. Now you say, but Zach, I don't have that. I only have, let's say a 40 amp. I don't want to pull a full 40 amps because that's too much. Well, the good news we found out is there's this little select button here and you can see it says 6, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 32, 40. You can select by holding it down 
which amount of amps you want to be the maximum. So don't worry, you can set it to that. So, I mean, that is helpful. It takes a little bit of thinking. You're going to have to do a little bit of thinking if you're going to be drawing this much current. Otherwise, you just, you know, <laughs> plug in the, the regular 110 wall outlet. So if you draw the full 40 amps, which could be really nice, uh, then you're going to be pulling 9.6 kilowatts. And that's a, that's a good pull. But you notice that we're getting a little technical here. We're talking about amps and current and all of this different stuff. This is stuff that you have to consider. You can't just buy this kit and plug it into a regular wall outlet. I mean, you can, but you will not get 9.6 kilowatts out of it. Now, the other thing you might be saying is, well, Zach, you just said some NEMA numbers and I don't know what you're talking about. This is some homework you have to do first. You have to make sure that these match what you have at home. Now, if these don't, if I looked it up and I don't have mm -hmm. the 1450, then you're going to need another adapter. So you'd buy this kit and then you'd have to buy an, an adapter. And these are tricky too. make sure that you actually know what they are and don't just go based off what it looks like, because you can get like a NEMA 1430 and it'll actually have a smaller, I think, like neutral thing here. And this will not fit into it, right. even though it looks like it would. It, it turns out that it doesn't. And you're going to be like sitting there going like, I can't charge my car. So on Amazon, you can find there's adapters for this and they have different prices from 80 to $120. You can also get a bigger kit that has like all of the adapters. If you think you need that, it's obviously more expensive. So think about the use cases, right? It's got to work at your house or your office, but you might want it to work on the road. Now on the road, this will definitely pr pretty much work anywhere in the US, right? Just a 110. But if you are going to plan on doing 220, you have to make sure that wherever you stop, the you 220. know what plug it is. Right. So again, call your friends and your grandma and find out all that before you pick this kit. But I mean, that's where you're going to use it. Sometimes you might be charging up at a campground and you have to make sure that you have the right adapter for it. Right. You know, you're thinking, oh, well, my budget is just buying this, but you might need more of these. Now, you don't have to buy their adapter kit, but you could also buy dog bones. But those are also 40 or 50 bucks as well. So I want to go back to this, the clicking in place. Mm -hmm. I think it's really cool. It feels really quality. But when we first got it, it wasn't as hard this time. It was a little harder. I think it's wearing itself in. It might be wearing itself in, but it's not as satisfying as I really wanted it to be. I wanted it to be like, click. But now I have to be like, click. That took 30, 40 pounds of force. Yeah, um, I have to say some people might have difficulties with that amount, amount of pressure. I mean, it really depends. I think if you're you know, a capable person, that's, that's fine. But if you have like hand strength issues, maybe you're going to run into issues with it. You'd probably have trouble with other plugging systems as well. But yeah, for like a Swiss company, I was expecting it to be a little more perfect. There is no app for this particular unit. On the European units, there's a, an app, but there's no app for this, so I can't tell you anything about it. Yeah, but I mean, I, I kind of like having no app. Okay. I don't need an app for my charger. My car has an app. Some cars do. Yeah. Some cars do, some cars don't. So yeah, this is just a nice, simple charger. You don't have to think too hard about it. So one of its big claims to fame, other than it's you know IP67 waterproof and dustproof, is that this part can be run over by a 6,600 pound car. I thought, well, they say it, but we should test it. We should test it with what? A 6,600 pound car. Well, no, 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 it's not a 6,600 pound car. They say that it's a 6,000, 600 pound wheel load. Yeah, we don't have anything that that's, heavy. That's one wheel. That would mean a, a vehicle with four wheels that weighed like 24,000 pounds. Well, we have a Rivian pickup truck. It's the heaviest thing we have. It's 7,000 pounds. Why don't we realistically, I mean, that's the, like the biggest thing you would have. Okay. Why don't we run over it? Yes, that's cool. But let me just ask real quick, when is that going to happen, right? Like this is going to be plugged into the wall. And unless the wall is Unless the outlet is at the bottom like this and I'm driving literally a foot away from the wall, how am I going to be running this over? Well, in Europe, they sell an extension cable for this part. Okay. Because maybe, you know, you, you have a situation where you need more. And so here in the US, I haven't seen the extension cable, but yeah. in Europe, you could put the 25 foot extension cable on it and then leave it in the driveway. Sitting in the driveway. And so like another car coming home could run over it. I agree with you. It'd be hard to run over it the way this is set up. And then when we're talking about it getting run over, we mean like slowly, right? Not like coming at it at 10 miles or 15 miles an hour right. in, a, in a parking garage. Well, we're going to go film it. So, <laughs> All right. We'll go test it out for you. Again, a use case that I don't think is going to occur for you. I, I agree, but they designed it for that. Like they, they didn't so have to. So we have to test well, it. And, and well, here's the thing. It would have been a lot cheaper if they... I mean, you'd be able to buy it for less if they hadn't put right, that just, engineering into it. They could have it. had a crappy plastic and, and here's the thing: What's it. the point of buying it if it can't do it? <laughs> I don't know. 
I don't know. That's our job. You're right. That's uh, our job. Before we go crush this thing, okay. I just want to talk about the charging wand, the charging handle itself. It's made out of some pretty decent plastic. It's got some pretty nice strain relief. It's got a pretty decent looking little cover for it. But the trigger is plastic and I do like that it has a little trigger guard, but it isn't impervious to breakage. If you were to drop it really hard, it could break. This is something we've talked about with all different chargers. There's only a few of them that have like a metal trigger. I think that it's going to be fine. This looks like it's reinforced plastic. I think it's it's going to hold up. Yeah, it looks really cool. Pretty dang well. But, you know, it's not titanium. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, the next scene you're going to see is whether or not we're sad because we broke it or whether we're ecstatic because it uh, withstood the force. <laughs> Here we go. Three, two, one, go! Um, so I just want to take this apart real quick because, I mean, it scraped this up. It made this look like it was going to fall off. But is that so bad? Oh, wow. And then on this end... Oh, wow, it's, it's, it's all intact. So, I mean, yeah, you might need to replace the two plastic caps. But you don't no, I think that's a badge of honor. Yeah, so, I mean... So, you know what? I don't think we feel good enough giving this away, but I think that, um, you know, we could have Papa use it for his MG. Yeah. I think that's a win for J Plus Booster. I mean, yeah, it took a full Rivian. Um, <laughs> it's still kicking. Yeah. That's not too bad. Again, it's a use case that I don't think, but let's just go prove that it actually charges still. All right, so let's uh, put this on, see if that works. That works. That fits, okay. All right, now you're gonna hold it, you feel, or should I not hold it? <laughs> I, I mean, nothing will get compromised. Ready? Yeah. I wanna get a sequence stop here. All right, all the lights light up. Okay. It's it, it seems happy. Okay, and uh, let's see if the ribbon's happy into the vehicle that tried to destroy it. So it's fully... It's fully green. You got green. Yep, so it's fully green. It says... Three kilowatts, four kilowatts. Yes, it's working. Five. Yep, going out. Six. Seven. Yeah, no smoke, no weird sounds. It's, it's working. Woo! All right. Good job, J plus booster. Dang, okay. All right. I think that's the only one we've ever tested, but they could say, that said it could do it. I think that's the only one we're going to test. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we're not gonna have anything to give away. Yeah, that was uh, impressive. Impressive, I did not think it was gonna survive. Nope, I didn't either. Oh, and also because you watched the end of the video, don't forget that we give a lot of these away. And so if you go over and join our Patreon for as little as a buck a month and now you know, we'll put the link down below. Um, we give these away to our patrons. All you have to do there is wait for us to post about it and then tell us why you think it's a good fit for you and we'll maybe give it to you.